Thanks for joining us for the Executive Series. Today, I'm joined by Peter James, who is the Chairman of Drone Shield. Peter, good to talk Hi, to you. Hi, Tom. Now, Peter, a very exciting time for the technology that um, Drone Shield is involved in. Mm. Globally, it's fair to say that there is a, a, an important groundswell taking place. I think that's uh, a good word, uh, Tom. I'd, I'd use the word exciting, exponential. Drones are now part of everyday life. We're used to seeing them, we're used to reading about them. Most often uh, for good purposes, such as uh, aerial photography, such as delivery, commercial, off the shelf, quadcopters. But just as they're used for good purpose, so too these days, exponentially, they're being used for illegal, bad purposes, particularly in the military, uh, in security and in terrorism. When I talk to military commanders around the world, they are very aware and concerned about the real threats the drones are now posing to their troops. As I was saying in the recent battle for Mosul, on occasion coalition forces were actually brought to a, a halt by ISIS, ISIL uh, manned uh, commercially available small drones which were armed with hand grenades, bombs, aerial cameras. You can imagine one commander said they were swarming, three or four drones swarming around his troops dropping bombs on them and all they had to deal with them was small arms fire and of course that's where we come in. I saw a quote recently by the head of the US counter-terrorism force and he said Tom two years ago this wasn't a problem, one year ago it was an emerging problem and today it's a real problem and of course that's where drone shield comes in with our detection and countermeasure platforms. So the implication, Peter, from what you've just said, or one of them at least, because there are so many facets yes, um, yes, within yes. that, is that uh, security and defence forces around the world are, are almost on the back foot uh, a little bit when it comes to this uh, technology because you know, uh, people with modest resources are able to yes. um, create a real problem for them. Is that a fair thing uh, to look, say? Look, I think, I think that is a challenge. And, and the military forces, security forces, are rapidly coming up to speed because these days... The bad guys, the terrorists, can literally walk down the shop and get a handful of these devices and deploy them to serious negative effect. And that's why a company like Drone Shield, we're a fast-moving technology company, we've got to move quickly too. So when we first uh, launched, uh, did the IPO some 18 months ago, we had one uh, detection uh, capability, our acoustic detector. Since then, we've uh, launched a thermal, radio frequency, radar, all integrated with the acoustics. We launched our um, drone gun that we've talked about before and we've now got a second uh, generation version of that integrated with the other technology. So just as um, the technology itself is moving, just as military is having to adapt, so too a company like Drone Shoe listens to the market and we're moving as well. Indeed. One thing that um, is very clear, though, is that the relationships between the military uh, and military contractors is uh, a very broad one, a very complicated mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. But uh, significantly, you're making traction on that front. You've got good conversations taking place, and you've also um, retained the resources of an important organisation in the US lately. That's correct. There's a couple of themes there. What I, I get most excited by, Tom, I sit in on the weekly sales call, as I said, with our various uh, sales and marketing teams and the opportunities and the sales that we're working on on a weekly, uh, daily basis are global and, and they're quite profound. At the moment, we announce this to the market, we're dealing, looking at a pipeline of $100 million, over $100 million of deals and these are large deals across 90 contracts with the likes of, for example, the French military and other major NATO countries listening to a call the other day and uh, looking at uh, the opportunities in South America. We've just uh, announced a good sale to the Paraguayan uh, government. Closer to home, we're working with the South Koreans. And of course, in our ba own backyard, and you'd expect an Australian company, an Aussie company, to be working with our own military, and, and we are. Uh, we're part of Team Defence Australia, great support from the Australian Defence Department and the Australian military. Uh, we've recently presented in a major trade expo, a, a military trade expo in Washington, uh, more recently in the UK, and also in the, mili uh, in the Middle East. 
so getting great traction, uh, working with our own government as well. And then you go, you mentioned law enforcement. So we've got uh, prisons. Uh, prison walls are made to keep bad people in. These days with drones, you've got contraband, you've got drugs, you've got mobile phones and the like just able to come in across the wall. Uh, so we're working with uh, prisons around the world. Uh, and also, uh, as I mentioned, we've just uh, been appointed to uh, support and protect the Hawaiian Iron Man. So the use cases are many and varied. You mentioned uh, also a strategic partner. Uh, one of the great opportunities for us and a challenge, we're a fast-moving, uh, smallish tech company. We have attracted a lot of attention from some of the majors, the systems integrators, uh, the bigger companies, the defence contractors, and they want to talk to us and engage with us. And of course, we're, um, we're focused on building our technology and, and selling it. So we've recently appointed Mesero, Mesero Financial, the large US uh, conglomerate, but with a specialist arm in defence, military, law enforcement, to give us some advice as to how we might engage with these many opportunities. Indeed, and you've just had a successful capital raising as well, Peter. So what's going to be the, uh, the aim in terms of deploying that capital? I'm a big, word, big believer in the F word, Tom, focus. So we've raised $2.32 million in October and we've got three mantras that we're looking at. Firstly, the continued build of the technology and that's not um, to get the technology working. It's already deployed, but this will be the next generation of technology. We've got an existing uh, distributorship, uh, 50 to 60 uh, distributors around the world in 50 countries. So we need more resources to build those out and manage them. And then, of course, if we've got $100 million worth of opportunities, we need the resources to engage with the militaries to close those, to get the deals coming through. I think that uh, Drone Shield is very much at the tipping point. Peter, it's always good to talk to you. Exciting times ahead. It we is. look forward to hearing more about them. Thank you, Tom. All the best. And thanks for joining us for the Executive Series.